Hail. It's about time. What's up everybody? It's Gibberish HS here, and today I'm here with an Air Saviors of Old Doom card review. I'm sorry it's been a while. I've been trying to get my camera to work and it does that does not seem to be working, so we're just gonna do this purely audio. Sorry about that. But we have a couple of cards for you guys today, 13 to be precise. The other ones that are out that I haven't been able to review yet, so I will get those out as soon as I can. So, today we're going to go over, like I said, 13 saviors of Old Doom cards. This includes over four classes of cards, and it's going to be really fun because we got a couple of interesting cards that might be a deck archetype that no one is talking about. So, let's get into it. First card is a 2 cost 3 2. Fish Flinger is a common card. Battlecry, add a random Murloc to each player's hand. Now, this card is really interesting because Murlocs work really well together. And so, when you play this card, yeah, you're giving a Murloc to your opponent. But unless he's playing another Murloc deck, this card is actually going to favor you more than your opponent because Murlocs work better together. Even if he got. Let's say the best Murloc he possibly could. You're still more likely to make use of your Murloc than his. Because your Murloc has other Murlocs to help it. So if you're playing a Murloc deck and you have Fish Flinger in it, it's more than worth it to play in my opinion. So, I want to rate this card 4 out of 5. Pretty good card. Definitely we'll see some play in some Murloc decks. Maybe even Paladin. Because it looks like we're going to have some Paladin cards. And today, we have a new Paladin card that supports Murlocs. Acos Spell Epic. Tip the Scales. Summon 7 Murlocs from your deck. Now, this card is really strong uh, if you have Murlocs. Uh, the problem is, well, there are two problems with this card that I think need addressed. So the first one is that you have to have these Murlocs in your deck. So whatever Murlocs you get and you put in your deck... This is a late game card, so you have to make sure there are enough Murlocs in your Paladin Murloc deck that will last you enough time to even if you were able to play this on turn 8 to get the most use of it. You can't just put 8 Murlocs in your deck and expect this to get the full value, alright? It'll only pull out 3 if you have 5 in your hand or if you've played 5. So, it's kind of important that you have enough Murlocs to where you could play maybe this twice and you could still get a good effect out of it, at least once. The second problem with this card is that Paladin doesn't really have any Murloc support. We haven't really seen a lot of Murloc cards for Paladin yet, so I really want to see more cards that would support this for this card to be good. If this was in a Shaman deck, this would be game breaking, but it's not. Because it's not a Shaman card, it isn't as good. So, I'm going to rate this star 3 out of 5, but it has the potential to be a 5 star card. All it needs is more support. So give them more Murlocs for Paladin, or just more neutral cards that you can stick in this Paladin deck, and you'll be good. 2 cost 3, 2, Arcane Flak Mage. It's a rare, and it is for Mage, obviously. After you play a secret, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. Wow, this card is just insane, alright? This just proves that Secret Mage is coming back, alright? It's undeniable now. They are really pushing for it. And you can also compare this, you can also prove this because of Cloud Prince at 5 cost 4 4 Elemental. It's a common Battlecry if you control a Secret, deal 6 damage. So even, this is incredible. For one more mana, you can get. You know, because this is Flame Strike, you know? This is Fireball. So for one more mana, you get a 4-4. Four, four. That's insane. All you have to do is have a secret on the battlefield. And this Arcane Flock Mage is incredible too, because it will take out any deck that plays aggro. If you're playing this card, you don't have to worry about that. The only problem with Arcane Flak Mage is that it's a 2 cost minion. And that reason why I say that, it's really well statted for a 2 cost minion. But the reason why I say that is because you can't, it's kind of hard to keep a 2 cost minion alive on turn 2. So it depends the deck that your opponent's playing. There are a lot of cards that would kill this, and they would want to kill this soon. So if you were able to play this on turn 2, all right, which you probably wouldn't want to do that because then you have to hope it survives. All right, but first of all, if you're gonna play this on turn two and you want to use it, that means your opponent already has a field. So you, 
if they already have a battlefield or it's somebody that you think you'll need this for, you don't want to play this on turn two. So don't worry about Arcane Flock Mage on turn two. You more likely want to play this on turn four or five where you could use it and get a D effect immediately with the secrets. Because all mage secrets are three costs. And just to let you guys know, I would be shocked if we didn't get at least one new secret for mage. Uh, with Kyle Prince, same thing. It's just incredible. Elemental is good. Probably better for Wild, but still, I showed these two cards at the same time because they are both crazy and they work really well together. So, both cards, five stars for Secret Mage. Next is a five cost three five Bizarre Mugger. He's a rare and he's a rush card for Rogue. Battlecry at a random minion from another class to your hand. So. Really interesting card. Uh, it's a little expensive for that. If you were able to change the stats a little bit, or uh, and loot and make the cost cheaper, it would be a much better card. But in this case, it's still a really good card because it, I like how it's specific to add a random minion from another class to your hand. Another thing that's important to add is that most cards in Rogue that generate cards in your hand are from your opponent's class. This can be from any class except for yours. It doesn't spe specify. So unless Blizzard is going to tell us that it's for your opponent's class and you just didn't write it, then this could be from any class. You could be fighting a warrior and get a shaman card from this. So it's very interesting in that. I think the rush is what really makes this card good. Besides the battle cry, because what this card does is, if it didn't have the rush, it would not be nearly as good because you would just be playing a bad card on tempo. On tempo, but this still gives you the card generation and the ability of board control enough to get this on. Uh, you probably wouldn't just want to play this and not attack. You would definitely want to play this and attack a minion with it most likely. But it's a very good card, very interesting. I would rate it probably four stars. Next is a 3 cost 3-3, three, three, Bloodsworn Mercenary. It's an epic battlecry. Choose a damage friendly minion, summon a copy of it. This is by far my favorite warrior card that I have seen the entire expansion. I love the artwork by the way, just look at that card, it is so beautiful. But no, just looking at this card, I can see so many possibilities, especially with Taunt Warrior coming around. But my biggest combo I want to see happen is Darius Crowley. I would love to see you play Darius Crowley. He destroys a say a minion with two attack. So he then becomes a 6-4. Then you can play Bloodsworn Mercenary on the damage Darius Crowley, which would make him an 8-6. Well, he would become a 6-4, and then he can attack again. So if he attacks another two cost minion, then he becomes an 8-4. So really strong combo there. Just think about that for a minute. Alright. For 8 mana, you can get 3 minions that are crazy good. And the stats for this minion for what its ability is, is very well. I love this card, 5 star card, I love Big Warrior, and I think this card could bring it back. Next is a 3 cost 3-3, three, three, Evil Recruiter. It's a common, which is surprising for its ability. Battlecry destroy a friendly lackey to summon a 5-5 five, five demon. That is crazy. Alright. And with other cards that I'll review in the next video, this card is just going to make it crazy powerful for Zulok. Alright, lackeys are already in Zulok, so this just adds more to it. Once you've played the vet lackey, it's a battle cry, so you've already gotten your worth out of it most likely. So this card is really strong. It's basically saying, destroy a one cost minion and get a five worth minion out of it. Really strong you get worth 7-7 seven, seven stats on turn 3, alright? You may be thinking it's 8-8, eight, eight, but it's 7-7 seven, seven because you destroy a 1-1 one, one minion. So, I love this card. I think it's really strong. Definitely 5-star cards. We are getting a lot of good and strong cards from this expansion. I gotta say, I'm really excited because something I didn't like in the last year that we had of Hearthstone is that Witchwood was... Okay, powerful, but it was mainly annoying because all we got was really odd paladin from that expansion. Next was Boomsday Project, and we were like, oh, okay, this is cool, but now mechs are kind of getting annoying. And then we had Rusticon's Rumble. The problem was the two previous expansions weren't nearly as powerful as they should have been. So then they, we were like, okay, you're going to have to make up with that with this third expansion, and they didn't. These three expansions were not nearly as strong as they should have been. So that made the gameplay 
a little worse in a way because like you had classic cards that were doing way more damage than these expansion cards and that's the thing expansion cards are supposed to be way more powerful than the classic and basic set because they're the basic set they're just meant to get new players into the mode usually what we're seeing though is that in this new year of the dragon we're seeing a difference in this we are seeing powerful cards we saw this in the league of evil all right it wasn't crazy powerful but we were getting strong cards that were making a difference in the game cards cards like grafam were making a difference all right we had life drinker crazy card all right that was from rise of shadows now we're seeing this again with saviors of old doom if they keep this up, they are going to have so many powerful cards in this expansion. But you got to be a little careful with this too because when these sets roll out and the other expansions are as powerful or if you have at least one expansion that isn't as powerful, then I don't really know what to say to you because then the gameplay is going to be as powerful and players are going to probably feel like their cards aren't doing as much as they did before. So I just wanted to make that little outburst there for y'all to think about as we go through this, these cards. Next is a 3 cost 2-2 two, two, Hooked Scimitar combo game, plus 2 attack, it's just a 2-2 two, two weapon for common for Rogue, uh, pretty good, 3 cost 4-2 weapons, pretty strong, not much to talk about. 6 cost 7-5, Rift Cleaver, Battlecry destroy a minion, your hero takes damage equal to its health, it's an epic and a demon. So. It's very interesting with this card because we people have been talking about if this ability is worth it or not. But we saw, already saw this card in Frozen Throne with the Lich King with one of his Frozen Throne cards was a two cost spell that said destroy a minion deal damage equal to its health. The same exact word in here. So we saw play of that in this card. Now that was a little different because that was card generation that you got from the Lich King. Alright, and I believe Arthas. So, this card is pretty good, alright? Um, I think it's pretty strong. The stats are a little weak for what you get, but that's not really a big deal because, first of all, he's a demon, so that's not too bad. But the good news is that with this card, it's just. You get a 7-5 for destroying a minion. Sure, you may take a little damage, but most likely that minion was already going to deal damage to you. And if it wasn't, then you don't want to play this card because it, that minion is probably going to die anyway. So, I just want you to keep that in mind when I say this card. It's a 4, co uh, four out of 5. Next is Splitting Axe, 4 cost 3-2. Battlecry summon copies of your totems. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I never liked Totem Shaman, and they tried to make it a deck archetype before. Not really, and they, they didn't really work. We saw a little bit of it in Kobolds and Catacombs. And the problem is, is that it just doesn't work. Now, if we do get a Totem Druid, I believe that they're not going to make the same mistake they made in Kobolds, and that they'll try to do it in a different manner. Now, 4 cost 3 2 weapon, Epic, is not that good, but. Some copies of your totem could be good if you had buffs with him. Uh, cards like Manatite Totem would be good for card generation. But besides that, there are really good totems that could help you in this scenario. So, I'm going to give this card two stars. But if we see more totem generation, just like I said with the Paladin Murloc, we need more cards to support this deck archetype. And we won't know until the expansion releases or until they show us all the cards. So, I like this card, but I think it needs a little, it needs a lot of help. 5 cost 5-5, five, five. Anka the Buried. She's about to cry, and she says, change each death from a minion in your hand into a 1-1 one, one that costs 1. Think about that for a second. That card is crazy, okay? That card is bonkers. First of all, Mechathune, right off the bat, all right? Just different combos you can do, all right? It's just so freaking strong. Because if you have Death Rattles, you want them to die. You want Death Rattles to go off and just be, you know, that. You want them to die. So the fact that they cost one but become one ones is actually better for you. Because when you play a Death Rattle minion, you don't play a Death Rattle minion just for like, wow, this is really good stats. I don't care about the Death Rattle. You play the Death Rattle minion because because it has amazing death rattles or it has good combos or stuff like that. Sure, the stats have a lot to do with it. But when they're just one ones that cost one to have an amazing death rattle, you don't care. So now, 
Ankh of the Buried gives rogue cards a new opportunity for Mechathune and Death Rattle, and I am all for this. Five stars. Final card that we're going to review tonight is actually two cards, and this is why I was saying that it's a deck archetype that could be for rogue that no one's talking about. First one is 5 cost zero 05 Desert Obelisk. If you control three of these at the end of your turn, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. And the second card was a 1 cost 1 1 Mogu Cultus. Epic. Battlecry, if your board is full of Mogu Cultus, sacrifice them all and summon High Keeper Wa. Who is High Keeper Wa? Well, he is a 2020 that costs 10 mana and deals 20 damage to all minions. And enemies. This means you basically win the game if you get this. Alright? But the problem is... It's really hard to get this. <laughs> Think about that. How are you going to fill your board with one minion? Alright? So there are possibilities, but only in Rogue. And this is why I say that... This new deck archetype is specifically for Rogue. Unless we see more cards like the shuffle copies in your deck or summon copies from other classes, you won't be able to pull this combo off. Not a big deal, though, to be honest, all right? Don't have to worry about that too much because these two cards I am going to put in the same deck and try to make work. Desert Obelisk is not that good, all right? It's actually really bad. It's really, 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 really bad. But you don't have to worry about that because we're going to try to make it good anyway. All right. There are cards like this that come out. And people are like, oh, this is the worst card in Hearthstone history. This card is sucks. It is horrible. And I agree. It sucks. But it looks so much fun to try to make work. This is one of those cards where I think it's so bad that I think Blizzard made it for a reason. All right. I think they didn't just make this card as a pack filler. They don't usually make pack fillers epics. All right. Now I say that, but they made seven seven a seven cost seven seven Starliner, which hasn't seen a lot of play. But we tried to make it work, and we did in Wild and other decks. All right. So I am really a fan of Desert Obelisk because I think it has a chance to be one of the most fun cards I can think of to try to make work. Same with Mogu Cultus, which is why I revealed them at the same time. These two cards are really fun, and I can't wait to see if I can make them work. I don't play a lot of Rogue, but these two cards alone have made me want to play Rogue. So, I love them, and I love all that they represent. I love the style of trying to get multiple copies of a card onto the board. So, if I can make this happen, I can make this happen. I will say, though, Desert Obelisk is a card I can see trying to make work in Druid. It's a weird combo, but if you got that 7 cost 4-4, four, four, I believe it is, and what you do is you play it and summons two copies, uh, it summons copies of your, it's adjacent minions, and you may be like, well, how are you going to play this on the same turn as 7, these are 5. Well, there's a 7 cost 4-4 four, four that reduces the cost of a minion in your hand by 7. So if you can reduce either both this or obelisk by zero, to 0, or if you can reduce that one card, then you can play that. And then you can play both Desert Obelisk, you have them on the board, and then you play the 7 cost 4-4, four, four, which would now be a 0 cost 4-4, four, four, and then you have 4 Desert Obelisk, which would de then deal 20 damage to random enemies. So that's a combo we can try. We'll see if we can make it work. It's pretty hard to make that last for that long in tempo for our Druid. But like I said, that's not going to stop me for trying. So, all right, guys. So, thanks for watching this video. I really enjoyed it. Uh, sorry about the camera again. But I still want to get this video up because now Blizzard is just starting to reveal these cards so much. We, we got no time to go into them. Have a great day, guys. And as always, have fun. See ya.